So uh, a week or so ago, I came across a podcast on uh, Saturday after dinner, a, a Lebanese platform, and uh, the, the conversation was with uh, AUV historian Makram Rabah. Now, I, I don't ordinarily follow uh, Saturday, and I'll be honest, I find both hosts of this podcast to be um, uh, superficial and, and uh, not, 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 not to be uh, uh, arrogant or anything. They're not really worth my time. I find them to be uh, sensationalist uh, fashionistas who sort of mindlessly regurgitate um, hackneyed uh, progressive uh, liberal cliches um, like like there's you know like there's some god-given truths in any case this is by no means a critique of Saturday uh, of course they're free to to be who they want to be it's just, it's just not my uh, my cup of tea it's not uh, either a critique of uh, Makram Rabah's um, historical method um, on that show, if indeed there was an actual, there was actual scholarship in, in the provocative history that he was advancing on, on, on Saturday. Um, I must also admit that uh, much of what uh, Makram Rabah said uh, during that episode made historical sense to me, despite some of the drivel that he dribbled along the way. Uh, historians, I recognize, are in the main uh, writers. They're people who spend years poring over text, uh, reading carefully, reading word for word, uh, sometimes reading between words uh, for meaning, for implication, for context. Uh, so they can be prone um, to falling into pitfall, uh, pitfalls um, uh, when, uh, when addressing uh, um, an audience in, in a public forum. Um, uh, so, so in that sense, uh, Makram Rabah's bit about, <laughs> he mentions date eaters uh, during the podcast as being Arabs, uh, this was comical, and, and I'm sure uh, that um, he would have never uh, written something like this if he were writing what, what he said. He said, essentially, if you're a date eater, you're an Arab. Uh, <laughs> that's, I mean, I'm, I'm sure he recognizes that, that this, is, this is comical. Uh, likewise, his claim uh, that uh, the Phoenicians came from Arabia is a laughable uh, Arabist cliche that no serious historian uh, will stand behind. This was a cliche popularized uh, by the likes of Sateh al-Hasri and, and Edmond Abbat, two eloquent um, Arab nationalist doctrinaires uh, who could not deny the centrality of the Phoenicians to Lebanese history, so they concocted this notion that, yes, the Phoenicians were the original inhabitants of Lebanon, uh, but the Phoenicians came from Arabia. Therefore, the Lebanese uh, who claim descent from the Phoenicians are Arabs. This, of course, has no historical or archaeological basis. Uh, it is a thesis of, it's based on a thesis of migration, and a thesis that never made it into becoming a theory. And it posits essentially that since there was a recent uh, instance of migration in Arab Muslim conquest in reality from the Arabian Peninsula, the history of which we know, uh, then there must have been earlier migrations uh, from desert to verdant lands. So this recent 7th century uh, migration was latched upon by Arabists and retrojected into an unknown past, yielding uh, the comedy of Phoenicians came from Arabia. Um, this farce um, uh, also uh, recently uh, brought us uh, Kamal Salibi's uh, famous or infamous book, The Bible Came from Arabia. Uh, and although not everything that comes from Arabia is perforce Arab. Uh, you know how powerful that mantra becomes in Arab nationalist circles. 
at any rate, um, Saturday uh, does have a history uh, of hosting and promoting uh, charlatans masquerading as historians, um, but that's you know that's not that's not an accusation, that's not an indictment. Uh, it's just an observation. I don't mean it in, to be disrespectful in any way. This is their gig, uh, and they have a right to it as much as uh, the next hustler uh, in the agora of um, ideas, half-baked or not. Uh, Makram Rabah, on the other hand, is a trained historian, uh, and that's what makes him uh, particularly toxic when he trots out uh, jingles uh, passing off as fact, uh, essentially the <laughs> the bit about date eaters and that the Phoenicians uh, came uh, from the Arabian Peninsula. In any case, there's no doubt that um, there is a history war uh, going on today in Lebanon um, or a war uh, over history or on history. Uh, and that has been ongoing. It started in 1975 with the start of the war in Lebanon, um, and it continues even after the war had ended in uh, 1989. So we're talking 30, 35, 34 years um, since the end of the war. The war on history or the history war is still ongoing in Lebanon. And this is the context into which this conversation was had, and that's the context um, in which I want to make my statement today. Uh, in this uh, ongoing uh, history war, uh, Phoenicianism, Phoenicianism continues uh, to annoy and torment advocates of pan-idea, such as Arabism and Islamism and other coercive identity constructs. Indeed, in the context of this history war, the uh, fashionistas of, of Sardi uh, proposed uh, Phoenicianism was racist. Uh, the word racist, uh, by the way, is a very effective conversational conversation stopper. Um, it's a smear that you could very easily throw in the face of anyone or anything that you you want to shut out. Uh, and that's that's a good way of putting an end to a conversation about Phoenicianism or with Phoenicianists. So Phoenicianism becomes racist. Uh, it tells us uh, that these are uh, infréquentables, people you cannot speak with because they are advocating a racist ideology. So this is what the luminaries of Sardé uh, are saying. And this was during that episode, that, 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 um, a snippet of an episode that, that that I saw. The guy says, "You know, it's it's a it's it's a racist construct, Phoenicianism, right?" So so this was the shiny object at which Makram Rabah would perk up, uh, and he would chime in. Not only is it racist, but it's also ridiculous. So in other words, uh, an idea, a an identity construct, a uh, self perception that is different from your own, is not only pure bigotry even if, if it's no skin off your nose, that it shouldn't bother you and it does not impinge on your own perception of your identity, still, uh, it is racist. Uh, but not only is it racist, but it's also cause for uh, uh, scholarly contempt and, and scorn and, and the audible uh, snorting and shortling of the otherwise uh, dispassionate uh, journalists of Saturday, you could hear them in the the, the background snorling as as Makram Rabah says, you know, not only is it racist, but it's also ridiculous. This is the foundation of, of totalitarianism, actually. Uh, if you're not who I say you are, uh, you're a racist, you're a clown, uh, you're to be shunned and disgraced and denounced. And that's essentially what uh, what this exercise is doing on Saturday. But why? Really, why? I mean, do you stop for a second and ask yourself why? Why do some people, and I'm quoting here from a uh, tweet uh, earlier this week, uh, and he or she asks, 
why do some people find the identification with a peaceful ancient people like the Phoenicians so provocative? Why? Seriously, why? Well, I say because uh, humanism and, and uh, innocuous, pacifist, benevolent, small nation identities are inimical to advocates of compulsory, totalitarian, big nation, pan identities. This is the eternal struggle, if you will, between the Renanian uh, liberal identité élective conception of selfhood, which was, you know, elaborated in Ernest Renan's Qu'est-ce qu'une nation, a famous um, lecture he gave at the Sorbonne in 1881 in response to the German romantic conception of identity that, that, that sort of mandated that that Frenchmen who lived in Alsace-Lorraine, because they spoke a dialect of German, were German in spite of the fact that they lived uh, within France proper and thought of themselves uh, as Frenchmen. So this is that's where this idea comes. It's sort of a struggle between the identité élective of of the Renan conception of identity versus uh, the the resentful irredentism of genocidal. Uh, pan uh, identities. Uh, so, so in that sense, not only uh, humanist, innocuous, benevolent Phoenicianism becomes racist and ridiculous, but you know the whole idea of uh, war is peace and freedom is slavery and ignorance uh, is strength uh, becomes the universe into which. Those can the the, you know, the sort of compulsory idea of nationalism gets uh, uh, wrapped up. So so there isn't uh, a, a, an any more eloquent um, illustration of 1984's totalitarianism uh, than uh, the criminal racket uh, known as Arab nationalism and the cortege of pundits and preachers and intellectual pit bulls that, that it musters in order to um, delegitimize uh, identity claims that are uh, contrary to what Arab nationalism or Arab nationalists uh, mandate. Meanwhile, in the pacifist, benevolent Lebanon of the Phoenicianists, the Phoenicians were uh, folks uh, smitten by the sea, they were possessed of an insatiable desire to sail, to travel, uh, to set up uh, outre-mer around uh, the ancient world then known to them, uh, establishing uh, comptoirs, establishing um, trading posts resembling very much their Lebanese homeland. Uh, they held all the ancient world sea routes, uh, wrote Jean-Louis Vaudoyer in the early 20th century, uh, known and unknown uh, sea routes they mastered, they held, they established their fabulous trade posts as far afield as Spain, Africa, and possibly Europe and the Americas. They were colonizers, this is a quote, they were colonizers who came and left without colonizing or brutalizing. They were merchants of goods and ideas. They were thinkers, princes, poets, pacifists, humanists, subtle, elegant, secretive. The source of their fortune had always lain at the other end of earth, beyond the oceans. And that's bothersome to Arabists and their cheerleaders and hacks. So I'll end with why. Seriously, folks, why? Thanks.